How to Achieve Maximum Power. Let me define exactly how power is achieved in a golf swing and how you can increase and maximize yours. Power is achieved by two factors. Number one, direct and solid contact. That means our club head is traveling toward our target and the club face is square to that target when we strike the ball. And then we also hit the ball in the center of the club head. Let's assume we've hit enough balls that we're doing this in our swing. Then the second factor is how fast the club head is moving when it strikes the ball. We want to have the club head moving as fast as possible so we hit the ball as far as we can. If we know the club head speed is the power source in the swing, how do we maximize it? We need to know what moves the club head when we're swinging. Well, there are four moving parts in the swing. First, the hips are turning, so that has an effect and moves the club head. Second, the shoulders are turning. That has an effect and moves the club head and adds speed. Third, the arm is swinging. That has an effect and moves the club head. And fourth, the wrists are hinging and unhinging. The wrists are the primary source of power in the swing because they have the fastest range of motion to move the club head through the hitting zone. What we need to do though is learn and know how exactly to get those four moving parts to maximize their speed at impact. What we need to be able to do then is create a chain of events or a sequence that's going to accelerate the club in a chain of movements. That works like this. When we turn back and wind up, our arm will swing and our wrist will hinge. When we change directions, we create a beginning of an acceleration. Hip, shoulder, arm, wrist. And we want to train that acceleration. For the purpose of this conversation, we're simply going to say that the swing is a turn, arm, wrist action, turn, arm, wrist. And we want to create that sequence. So what we're simply going to do is use our turn as a source of movement for the swing to move the arms and the club and the club head. We're going to do that by the correct sequencing. And that sequencing simply is we're going to turn first, arm, wrist, turn first, arm, wrist, in that order. If we do it in that order and change directions with acceleration, we're going to create another factor. And that factor is what I call loading the club. When we start our downswing, our hip is going to grab our chest and begin to turn, move it. So the hip begins to turn and the chest gets pulled along with it. As I start that downswing, the hip turns, pulls the chest. The chest in turn pulls the arm and creates a loading or stretching factor across the lever of the shoulder and the arm. As the arm pulls, the shaft bends and the wrist the left thumb and the right index finger get loaded in a stretch fashion also. This means when we change directions properly, we're going to load two levers, create a double catapult delivery of the club that makes power effortless and automatic. So we want to be sure that we're sequencing our swing correctly, using the body turn as a source of movement for the swing and allowing the hands to respond. So that simply means I'm going to turn first, arm, wrist, turn, arm, wrist in that sequence. There's one additional factor that will maximize your club head speed and that is simply to keep the club on its widest arc. We do that by turning. If we turn first, we've maximized our arc width or the length width from our body to the club at address and we retain that width. If we start with our hands and arms, we narrow that width and cost ourselves a potential power. So we want to make sure that we're turning first, arm, wrist, turn, arm, wrist, to maximize our power. If we turn first, we're going to get the widest swing arc. If we turn first in the swing, in the sequence, turn, hinge, turn, hinge, we're going to maximize the torque in the downswing, create a double loaded lever system that's going to catapult the club head 
to its maximum velocity through impact and give you your maximum power. Our maximum power is achieved when we start our swing with a one unit turn away. The hands remain passive and the arms extended. The turn is moving the hand arm unit. Notice how wide of a swing arc this creates. This wide swing arc is a key component to power. It is created by using the turn to move the hands and keeping the arms extended. The shoulders continue to turn and complete the back turn first. Then the arm swings into the chest and the momentum of the club head hinges the wrists. Notice the shoulders have fully wound up around the stable base of the instep. From here, the turn is set to unwind, creating transition torque and loading the double lever system, the arm and wrist, to create a double catapult effect to maximize club head speed at impact. This transition torque loads the levers at the shoulder and the wrist to create a double catapult club head delivery to maximize club head speed through impact. This optimal turn driven sequencing maximizes your power. Here's how the Tour's longest driver uses an even more intense example of the transition torque loaded double catapult power source to consistently launch drives over 320 yards. Here's how the world's longest driver uses a tripod based reverse turn and a turn driven transition torque loaded double catapult system to power drives close to 400 yards. Our swing training system trains a tripod based turn driven swing that will create the transition torque needed to load the dual lever double catapult system ensuring that you reach your maximum power potential. Our swing training system will train everything you need to have a turn driven swing that will maximize arc width and create the optimal sequence of turn, arm, wrist that will set us up in position to create the down swing loading of the two lever system to create a double catapult effect to catch the ball, the maximum club head velocity ensuring that you will get your maximum club head speed and your maximum power.